Say hi. If Paul Kruger looks comfortable at quarterback, that's because the Utes starting defensive end played QB all through high school. <laughs> she's in, she's in. But coming from this family, his switch to defensive line isn't exactly surprising. Not only did his grandfather play defensive end in college, so did his dad. Paul Sr. played for Oregon State in the 1980s. Pass interference. <laughs> it worked in Utah. Utah. That was great defense is what it was. More recently, younger brother David has committed to Utah as one of the most sought-after D-line recruits in the state. I'm very excited. I can't wait. You know, looking at my brother out there, uh, it's just, it's really exciting. <laughs> then there's Joe, six foot seven at just 15 years old and with quickness that defies his size. He's already received a written scholarship offer to follow his brothers. How many days a week do you wear red? Um, three out of five. Even 12-year-old Mark has big plans. I'm going to pitch Mark the ball. He's going to run in, all right? From the sideline, the Krugers look like a family built for success, where opportunity comes easily. But look up to the foothills behind their home. That's where a story unfolds that reminds them every day what could have been. It was Mother's Day, 1999. That moment of, of having fear that you might lose a child was was it it stops you in your tracks. Paul Kruger was in seventh grade and like his brothers and sisters he loved adventure. Well I remember you know my uncle coming over to our house and showing us his new cool Jeep and well, he was the adored uncle and um, he had just got a new Jeep for his birthday and uh, he took my four oldest children for a, a Jeep ride. And uh, I remember coming up this one steep hill and uh, you know looking over the edge and saying man that's that's a steep drop, you know, and but we kept climbing up, and then all of a sudden we stopped, like right on the mid trail, and uh, and I remember um, looking at my uncle, and I could tell that he was scared, and he, you know, something was wrong, and at that point we started rolling backwards. It rolled once and dropped my other three kids on the ground, and then the second time it came over, it must have thrown him up on top of the windshield and then rolled right over the top of it. I couldn't breathe and I couldn't stand up, but I didn't hurt, and so I didn't think I was, you know, injured in any way. My brother picked him up and put him in the Jeep and they drove home. So I laid him on his back and propped his, uh, put a, feet, a pillow under his feet, and, uh, and then I called 911, and literally they were at the house in four minutes, and that's really what saved his life. The paramedics came and said he's bleeding internally severely immediately um, got him on an IV. He lost consciousness in the ambulance. They said that his spleen was in a number of pieces and then his, uh, the main artery to his kidney was uh, crushed. I remember saying to the doctor, is he gonna live? And he said, I, he's not out of the woods and I can't tell you the answer to that. And I, every day I would ask him, is he gonna live, is he gonna live? And, and I think it was after about 10 days that he said he's gonna make it, he's gonna, he's, he's improving. It may sound dumb, but I, I never really was fearful of dying. I mean, I never really, even to this day, I, I know that it's something I need to watch and, and be careful of, you know, but I think living with fear and, and with doubt and, and those things are just, you know, will just boggling my mind down. With a scar the length of his stomach, one kidney remaining, Paul left the hospital four weeks after the accident, and a few months after that, he was talking about playing football, something his parents had decided was just too risky. I remember from ever since I can remember wanting to play football. I don't know how he got the papers, but he'd gone and picked up the papers himself, and he brought the papers home from school, and he said, I want you to sign these. And I said, son, you know, you, we just don't feel good. You know, we're worried about you, and, you know, we're going to have to focus on other things. At that age, I was like, what's a kidney do, you know? Um, I didn't even know what a spleen was, you know, so. He said, I've been waiting for this, and if you don't sign it, I will. I remember him kind of slapping the papers on the bed and saying, if you don't sign these, I will. And, and we discussed it and said, you know, this is, this is what he's been wanting to do. So my husband agreed to coach him all through, <laughs> all through junior high and up into high school and, and be on the sidelines. And, I, and 
And I, I didn't even want him playing football, to tell you the truth. I, you were so worried. I wanted him playing basketball or golf where you don't get hurt. Because I knew, I knew what football does to your body. And so I kind of discouraged it, but he, he yeah. had such a desire to play that nothing was going to stop him. So we let him play. Yeah, and we, he would have been heartbroken. And, and we, we had to have looked like fools that first year. I think when he went out for a pass, I went out with him just on the <laughs> sidelines. <laughs> then he wants to play quarterback, and that's probably the worst position uh, for getting hit in the back or in the kidney. So. We padded him up and made sure that if he got hit back there, he was okay. And by his junior year at Timpanogos High, he was turning heads with his arm strength and his overall size. Out of high school, Paul was recruited by the youths as a quarterback, but he also had experience at defensive end. He was the guy brought in on third down passing situations to harass the other team's QB. Three with time. Now is hit and fumbles, and the Utes have it. Now, he says, this backfield is right where he wants to be. In his first college season, Paul Kruger made more tackles than any other freshman in the Mountain West Conference. This is picked off, the interception made there by Paul Kruger, the defensive end. I, I just remember the moment where he made that interception on the UCLA game. And I remember seeing it and screaming, and then we both looked at each other, and it was a moment for, for parents, it really was, to, to um, see our child uh, excel in something that he's been wanting to do his whole life. To not only have him here, but to have him, to have him uh, doing so well in so many ways is, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And just in case, his coaches are watching. <laughs> That's done. He's done. Right. The coach is looking for a trick quarterback. That was a good guess, actually. Yeah. Sammy Leinbaugh for the Mountain.